All right, fellas, let's do our warm up. We're talking about idioms, right? Mr. Toll, what are idioms? Idioms is basically a phrase for you. It's a figure of speech, that's right. So we had to do three quick ones. Number one is keeping your nose to the grindstone. Mr. Rajo, what do you think that means? Mind your own business. Minding your own business? In a certain sense, but out of the three choices, smelling the fresh air, hurting your nose, or continuing to work. What do you think it means? Boom, Mr. Reed, you got it. All right, Mr. Torres, number two is buy a pig and a poke. That's a pretty old saying. Do you know what that means? Nope. Anybody give a little help? Buy something without a cent. She didn't want to buy a pig and a poke. Buy something without a cent. That's right. That's exactly right. B is the correct answer. And Mr. Johnson, will you uh, finish up with number three? Number three is all ears would mean if you're all ears right now. You are attentive and listening. You are attentive and you're listening, right? Okay. Today we are going to do our debate. The past three days we've been working really hard on putting together our evidence cards and our flow sheets for our debate topic. Mr. Reed, what's our debate topic? Sexual orientation in sports. In particularly, we're looking at it should uh, should discriminatory laws be put in place for athletes that are maybe gay or, or homosexual? Should there be some laws protecting them from discrimination within the locker room, within their sign, within signing, and within their contracts? So we're going to go over our debate PowerPoint real quick just to get everything organized, and then we're going to segue right into our debate. So, the debate. I'll skip the video today. Parts of a debate, right? First is the introduction. Second is the rebuttals. The conclusion, and then at the end, a little Q&A from me and Ms. Stacy Miller. Okay, an introduction of a, of a debate. Mr. Reed, what's the importance of a good introduction in debate? Introduction to tell what you're talking about. Is that 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 the other person know what the subject is? That's exactly right. You're stating your case. Yeah. And how do you state your case effectively? Uh, by using effectively the uh, info and uh, details. Details. So you're stating your case. It's also important to make it relevant, right? Yeah. Me as the audience, if you're not making your introduction very relevant, I'm probably either A, going to tune in or I'm going to tune out. So you have to make it relevant to today's society, especially in a debate, and especially in a competition debate like you guys are going to be engaging in today. So after you outline the importance of your events, after outlining your topic, you're going to get into your main points. But you don't want to give too much information on your main points in your introduction. That's where you're going to get into the body of your debate, and particularly your rebuttals. Okay. Mr. Torres, what's a rebuttal? What's a rebuttal? I don't know. You don't know? So if I told you to put your head up, what would you say back to me? No. Boom, you just rebuttaled me right there. Not a very good rebuttal because you didn't support your facts of why your head's down and why you're breaking the norms and expectations of Silver Road. But right there, Mr. Torres just shared a rebuttal. I asked him to pick his head up. He responded with, no, it's a rebuttal right there. He just defended what I had to say. How do you rebut? How are, what are some effective ways to perform an effective and sound rebuttal? Uh, you always know, Always uh, just point detail and back this, your case up for it. Right. So you can argue against it. If you're with it, when you're against it. You gotta know your case, right? That's the first important thing. You have to know what you're talking about. And you gotta listen to the other uh, person. Well, you gotta know their case. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. You gotta know their case. Mr. Johnson, what's another important thing on how to effectively rebuttal? Being silent, is that a good rebuttal? No. Yeah. Yeah, because you're listening. Because you're listening. You're listening to the debate. But when it's your turn to speak, 
and and defend the debate, how do you think you should do that? Planning an opening when there was planning an opening. Now, if I'm giving a rebuttal, do you think it's going to be more effective, Mr. Reed, if I'm rebuttaling you like this? Yeah, I, I don't agree with you, Mr. Reed, because I, I, I don't think no. that. Damn. Or if my and my head is up, I'm keeping eye contact. My posture is good. My chest is out. My head is up. My vocal inflections are loud and confident. I'm using hand gestures, and I'm looking right at you. Right? That's going to make you believe, and it's going to make the audience believe that you know what you're talking about. Plug the holes in your argument. What does plugging the holes in your argument mean, Torres? Uh, if you got any like lies. Mm -hmm. Like uh, plug the holes, like make sure you, make sure all your facts is like true. true, like make sure all your facts is right. And because if you don't plug your holes, that's when people try to find find a little thing to revoke them. That's right. We're talking about the little hole in your shirt, right? Your argument is like a shirt, and if you have a little hole in your shirt, an effective and a uh, and good debater is going to spot that little hole, and his goal is to rip it open so that it's open for everybody to see. It's obvious. Okay, so you've got to plug those holes. You've got to make sure any hole in your shirt is covered up, or at least you'll be able to defend it in your debate. You need to get in the mind of your opponent, right? That's Sports 101. You can get inside the head of your opponent, trip them up. You're going to be in good shape. You're going to be in good shape. And then just like Mr. Reed said, you have to know the case of your opponent. So, as we're plugging up the holes in our argument, Mr. Rajo, what is another thing that we should be looking for? If we're plugging our holes, we should also be looking for their holes, their holes. Their holes right? You want to expose your partner. You want to hold them accountable for any hole or flaw in their argument. You need to hold them accountable. Okay? You got to what Mr. Johnson was saying. You have to, when somebody's debating, you have to listen. You got to listen, right? And while you're listening, it's important to write down what they're saying. I know when I was in college and I was engaged in my first debate, the whole time during the rebuttal period, I was just thinking about what I was going to say. And by the time it was my turn, I hadn't listened to the introduction of my opponent. And so though I had some sound of rebuttals that I had prepared before my debate, I wasn't able to directly rebut what they said because I didn't, right? You gotta be confident. How do you show confidence? Okay, Q and I. That's when the audience asks questions. That's when the audience asks questions. About your case. And so you got to anticipate those questions and be able to field them appropriately. OG, Bobby, Jerson. Okay, so we already discussed our debate topic. Okay, and so now I want to go over the rubric so you guys know, can expect. <clears throat> What are the requirements? You'll know what are the requirements. What are the requirements for your debate? You got to have respect for the other team. Okay, no laughing or making fun of anybody. Maybe if they get tongue tied or a little twisted up, you got to remain quiet. Let them get their thoughts. Let them gather their thoughts. And you have to let me and Stacy Miller have the opportunity to coach them through it, so that they can learn how to stand up, speak in front of people clearly and uh, articulately. So, information. Your information has to be sound. Everything you say has to be backed with facts. Everything you say has to be backed with facts. You can't just say it because that's what you believe. You have to say it and you have to back it up with facts. Appropriateness. Fag, faggot, queer. Can't hear those words during the debate. You can refer to um, a homosexual as a homosexual or gay, but any innuendo or inappropriate oh, oh, sexual oh, comment. You don't get it? Fagging and gay, like, they rock the same boat. Right. They do. 
they they go closely hand in hand. But if you have you ever on the news, you hear gay rights and homosexual on the news, right? I mean, I don't watch news. On TV, on politically correct TV, it's gay and homosexual. So we're gonna try to remain. And if we're in a debate, if you want somebody to take you seriously, if you drop a word like fag, faggot, or queer, um. The weight of your argument is going to significantly decrease because people are going to just think that you're ignorant, to be quite honest. I'm going to say he ain't straight. He ain't straight? That'll be somewhat acceptable. He ain't straight. Okay? So, you go both ways. like I said, your grade's going to be based off of your effort, trying, and your willingness to uh, be coached through it. He go right, he go left, and I go straight. What? You go right, I go left, then you go to the street. <laughs> Our debate schedule, we're going to flip a coin, see who goes first. Me! I got one to work. Then after that, the first team is going to do the intro where everybody's going to get a chance to talk. We're going to keep it around roughly two minutes. If it goes a little bit above, a little bit under, I'm not too worried about that. Then the other team's going to do an intro. Same thing. Two minutes. Everybody's going to state uh, the case and develop the case, and then we'll move on. Rebuttals. If this gets good, I'll let it go as long as it takes for everybody to get a chance to state their stance. Okay. We'll keep it around two minutes. But if this gets, if we get good banter going on back and forth, um, I'll let it go. And then the other team is going to get a chance to rebuttal. During the rebuttal process, sometimes somebody might say something that really you just want to immediately respond to, but you have to give them their chance to speak, and then you will get your turn to. Okay? So you have to let both teams get a chance to speak, so you can't interrupt until it's the next team's turn. Then, Team A is going to conclude their argument address any of the opposing team's rebuttals that they need to address, and then Team B will do the same. There'll be a Q&A time where me and Miss Stacy Miller are going to ask you questions, and then after Q&A, um, we can collectively come together and decide who won the debate. Mm -hmm. All right? I feel bad for you, son. Good so. Uh, Johnson, Team Captain Reed. Nah, what's Oh, Captain. Team Captain Toll. All right, Mr. Johnson, heads or tails? It is tails. Do you want to be for or against discrimination laws within the NFL or any other professional sport? Yes, I want to be against. Okay, so you guys are going to say be for it. Discrimination laws being put in place for homosexuals in professional sports, and you guys are going to be against it. All right? Mr. Johnson, since you also won the coin toss, do you guys want to go first in your <coughs> introduction? Do you want to go first, or do you want this team to go first? Do you want your team to give their introduction first, or do you want the other team to? Oh, boy. I don't know how to get it. So, uh, Johnson's team's going to go first with their introduction, and so, due to their privacy, we can cut the. Well, we'll just, yeah, we'll just listen. Yeah, we'll just listen to this one. All right, so, Mr. Torres or Mr. Johnson, introduce why there should not be discrimination laws in professional no, sports. Are you against it? Are you against it? Yeah, you guys are for it, they're against it. Why should there not 
the discrimination laws, Mr. Johnson. That's not an acceptable term. Remember that? Okay. Explain more, Mr. Torres. Why is being gay or homosexual... How um, you don't want to be in the same locker room as him? Okay. So, players don't want to be in the same locker room. It's uncomfortable. That's good. Keep going. You get in a fight and kill him. It could, it could cause a fight. Okay. So, there shouldn't be discrimination laws because it could start a fight. Mr. Johnson, why shouldn't there be any discrimination laws in the, against, uh, for homosexual athletes? So you believe that equality is already in place, and so there's no reason to push the envelope and create more discrimination laws because that's just saying that there's not equality when there really is. Is that basically what you're saying? Uh, what I was basically saying is, they homosexual, like, they should be, they should be around someone that's, that's uh, uh, I don't even know why. Heterosexual? Yeah, heterosexual. Okay. Perfect. I don't even know why they're around them, because they got difficulties for it. Like, I don't know if they feel comfortable with them being around them. And, uh, Leave the plants alone. Uh, you got to realize from that, perception, um, they ain't never been around someone that was homosexual before for it. How would they even feel about that? You feel me? Right. They'll probably uh, tease them, you feel me, and make them want to kill that song or something, you feel me? But they don't really know what they're doing, you feel me? But they got to know that people got feelings for them. Mm -hmm. so, um, but some people, they just don't care, you feel me? They don't got no, uh, you feel me? Uh, that's what I look for. Um, uh, empathy? Empathy for anybody, you feel me? So, uh, so I'm going to just go ahead and say that, leave it off of that. That was perfect. Excellent introduction for Team A. Okay, now, Team B, you guys are not rebuttaling what Mr. Johnson and what Mr. Torres said first. You are simply introducing why there needs to be discrimination laws in professional sports to help protect homosexuals. So, Mr. Reed, I can tell you're chomping at the bit. Go ahead. I say, I say it should be, it should, y'all should let all people play football or basketball because they all equal. They all the same just because he he, he got he got difficulty. That's just like saying if you was you had a mental illness, he couldn't play football, he couldn't do this. You shouldn't put a limit on what somebody could do because what they is or what they like to do in their spirit time. If he's a good player, if he can play football or play basketball, then let him play because that's that he good at it. It's not, it's, not, it's not what he's doing in his spare time or what he chooses to do or how he acts. You got, you got football players and basketball players that get in trouble with that. You got football players and basketball players that keep it being crying, but y'all not limiting them from playing football, but y'all don't limit somebody who got uh, uh, It's not a illness, it's just a change of their sex. You can't. I, 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 I understand exactly what you're saying. Mr. Reed is saying that uh, sexual orientation has nothing to do with how good an athlete you are. And so, uh, a man's decision of what he does sexually shouldn't impact uh, his relationship with his teammates or um, whether or not he gets signed in, uh, in the NFL, NBA, or, or any sports. Mr. Toll, you're next. Continue with this intro. You got another point you'd like to talk about? He, he basically said it all, really. Can you explain it in a, maybe different terms? No, that's how I was going to explain it. Really. Word for word. Every single word, Ops. All right, go ahead. I want to see if you have that type of memory. Go ahead. Listen, 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 listen. I don't need to sketch what my, my man said, you feel me? But yeah, my man got it, feel me? Go word. But I want to hear you. I want to see if you got it. You got yes, it. Introduce, got it. help introduce your topic. Yeah, though. I, that that cool. is right, though. If that man want to be what he want to be, he should allow to be uh, playing hey, sports. He want to be. Everybody, he, for example, my man, James Collins, Jason Collins, for real. They ain't know Shorty was homosexual. They ain't know he was homosexual until he came out of the closet right. and said, yeah, I'm homosexual, God this, God that. that. Oh, and, they still, and they still respect that man for just said it. Real. You know, if he would talk later on in life, for real, it would be a whole city field to blow out the push, for real. That's all. 
I like it. So what Mr. Toll is saying is Mr. that Collins. it never, you know, Jason Collins, he went <coughs> about 10 years in the NBA without anybody knowing that he was a homosexual, and it didn't affect his play, didn't affect his uh, relationship with his teammates. It didn't affect whether or not he got signed. It didn't affect his relationship with uh, the owners of the teams. But, you know, now what you this team should be thinking, Mr. Torres and Mr. Johnson, is what if he came out 10 years ago with that have affected him? So that, that's where you start thinking of rebuttals, right there. You can say, 10 years ago, if he came out of the closet, it would have drastically changed his, his impact uh, on the NBA. So, Mr. Araujo. Can you uh, bring the introduction to a close? Basically, kind of take your team's case and narrow it down why there should be discrimination laws that um, prevent homosexuals and, or maybe gays from being treated bad in professional sports. Why shouldn't what? Why should it be? Why should they be allowed to play? Why should, should homosexuals be able to play? Be protected. In, in the, in the, in or the NFL without anybody harassing them Judge or them judging them on what they do on their spare time. Uh, I'll say for the conclusion, uh, I mean, I would say not, I mean, everybody's different, you feel me? Like, there shouldn't be, there shouldn't be uh, nobody judging somebody for who they are. For the, uh, like, in court, I'm pretty sure the United States the Supreme Court, they they going they're not gonna say nothing about it. As long as you you are a good sport, you play the right the right way and you're not doing nothing. I understand that they saying something gay or trying to talk to one of the NFL players or whatever they playing, you feel me? So nah, I'm just they should they should be allowed to play any sport. Should be allowed to play any sport and do it without being harassed, right? Yeah, as long okay. as they play, nice they keep their, their stuff to themselves, they fine. Perfect. That was a good point. All right, so now what I'm going to give you guys is I'm going to give you, <clears throat> everybody should have a pencil. We're going to go over some possible, I'm just going to give you little bite-sized pieces of possible rebuttals for each side just to get your brains moving. And this is where you write down. So we'll start with uh, Mr. Johnson. If I was on your team, <coughs> if I was on your team, looking at their argument, I would first hit on Jason Collins. I would say, so you honestly believe that if Jason Collins came out 10 years ago, that nothing, no harassment would have taken place at all, would have been kumbaya, everybody. So I would really hit on that point. So go ahead and think about that for a little bit. If I were you guys over here, I would say there's no such thing as equality. People are always getting bullied. People are always getting derogatory comments said against them. And... There just needs to be discrimination uh, laws, not just to protect homosexuals, but to protect everybody. We have bullying, and so this is just the, 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 the stepping stone towards great laws that can make professional sports a lot cleaner. So those are two examples to get your juices going. So you can write it down, think of two rebuttals, and in about 30 seconds we're going to go to our rebuttal phase of the debate. So go ahead and converse with your teammates. We'll cut the film and uh, we'll resume back with the rebuttals. Resume with our rebuttals. Mr. Johnson is going to be first. <laughs> the camera will be on. No, I just have it on him, sir. It's just on me. I'll stand over here. All right. Mr. Johnson, let him have it. So listen, my brothers. Y'all sitting right here telling me that, that people they just supposed to accept the difference, the differences from each other, you feel me? He is homosexual. How am I supposed to go in the locker room and accept the fact that he's gay? He's looking at me and his thumbs. But you know what, though? I don't agree to that. Because that's a problem. But I think we need to sit around and negotiate that. Because that's not right. Y'all got to accept the fact and listen. This man is homosexual. You feel me? That's not right. He don't have the fact to come in the locker room and sit down with the rest of the brothers and look at that man all sleazy and greasy with his flow sheezy. That don't go. So y'all got to pay attention, my brother. 
You got to think about it. Take a second. This man is a man, Damon. He's a man. So you got to realize and think, how can I accept the fact that this man is homosexual? And I'm willing to be next to this man and have a relationship. Because the game is built on caring, cat, character, and relationship. We have to sit down and engage with one another. How can I do that? This man is on my team, but he's homosexual. He might be thinking about me, dreaming about me. Ain't that crazy? Go ahead, have any questions? Boom, Mr. Reed is out of his seat. He is ready to go. Let him have it, Mr. Reed. So, so tell me this. If, 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 if you had a child, right, child, you'll want your son to be treated equal. Even, uh, even, even no matter what sexual you have. Yeah, you got my child. If you had, if you, if you had a child, you wouldn't want your child to be bullied. He was gay. He wasn't my child. It, it don't matter if he was gay or not. You won't want your child to be bullied. No, sir. You'll want, you, you'll want your child to have all the things that other children do. Yes, everything sir. other children do. Yes, so sir. why you, why you, why you say this man can't play basketball because he got a sex, his sexuality? What he like to do? If, if he not, if he not coming off a child, why, why, why shouldn't he have to play basketball? He a good athlete. Because. He might get a sensation. If 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 if, if they would if he, they didn't think he was a good athlete, they wouldn't have signed him before they found out he was gay. That's not so when they found out he was gay, y'all gonna go back what somebody else gonna do? If if you had if you had a sexuality problem, would you want somebody to fire you from your job to stop you from feeding your children or no. stop you from feeding your family? No, sir. So so why why would y'all try to take this job from this man? Because it's his sexuality. I ain't homosexual. It's his sexuality. Yeah, listen, man. Listen. Everybody's different, bro. Mr. Every Toll is out of his seat. Let's oh, give the man a listen, turn. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Back in the days, my brother, my man Martin Luther King fought for us to get equal rights. You feel me? Equal. Either way, you homosexual, you straight, you, you go zigzag, you feel me? But listen, my brother, Jason Collins. Yeah, man, he's a good basketball player. And I think nowadays he get more playing time than he was getting before because he came out the closet and said he was homosexual. You see, he's he doing his thing now. But listen, I understand where you're coming from, you feel me? But nowadays, Jason Collins, they, they sold his contract down, you feel me? He was signed with uh, the Brooklyn Nets with a 10 day contract. I, I don't got no problem with that. You got to go with homosexual. But listen. Listen, my brother, I want you to listen. Always remember, don't want people to treat you different from other people, for real. Because if you do, something wrong with you, my brother. Something is wrong with you. Something, something, something is very wrong with you, right? Always remember, I'll give right? you a, a chance. Always remember. Arado, close it down for your team, and because uh, Johnson's a one-man army, we'll let him have a, uh, a second. second chance at a, at a rebuttal since it's a... It's a three-on-one right now. So, Mr. Araujo, go ahead and bring us home in about 30 seconds. Basically, final uh, rebuttal. The legal and culture can tap for gay man to serve primarily to preserve and reinforce the social media attached to the gender. So basically, for real, it don't matter what they are, you feel me? As long as he's a good sport and he, and he stay on his lane, are you, you feel me? You in the same locker with a homosexual, right? You don't gotta say nothing to him. You don't gotta say nothing to you. You feel me? All you gotta do is play his sport, and he do him, and he do you. You feel me? That's my code, dude. For all this. If you knew, if you didn't know you were gay, you wouldn't have felt no type of way. Exactly. But, but, but since he came out and said he was gay, now you feel some type of way. Only way you should think he was gonna say something to you if he think you gay. So, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't take your anger or how you feel yeah, out of that man because he do something on his spare time. time. If, if he was, if he listen, if he would have came out and said he was gay, yeah, you, you probably have been out taking drinks with him, all that before he said he was gay. Now he said he was gay. You gonna judge him on who he is? 
Okay. Listen, my brother. All right. Now we're in the conclusion phase of our um, our fa of our debate. So, Mr. Johnson, conclude by addressing the rebuttals that your opponents just sent your way. So, go ahead. Listen, my brother. We ain't landing on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landing on us. Martin Luther King, incited by saying that he had a dream that black people and white people can come together. He didn't say homosexuality and homosexual can come together one day. So therefore, we need to be separated. There's no right that we can come together. He's like a man. That don't go. I know there's a difference. But you got to realize and take the time to think about what that man will do when he's around other men. Because that's what he like. He feels a sensation for. I know he's good at what he do. But he also good at what he do. <laughs> and what he like. And that's you. <laughs> All right, I like listen, it. Listen, listen, All right, this team right here, you guys have two minutes to conclude. Listen, listen, listen. What you just said, you just basically assumed the worst that that man was going to touch you. You just assumed that he, that man was going to touch you. You don't know what that man might do. And this man wasn't in a, in a lot, bro. He might think straight, you feel me? But then when y'all separate, he might, yeah, he might go ahead and think, he might go. Left and right, you feel me? Uh, that's what he but got. listen. Listen. Your man's. Yeah. So listen, right? You know how to control yourself at your workplace, right? You like females. Uh -huh. It's females that work at your workplace, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. So you know how to control. You're not going to just go off at a female at your workplace because that's your job. You need that job. So, so, you, so, you, so you gotta be professional as you can be. That's his job. Right. He need that job. Right. He play that sport to get a check. So why would you think he gonna come off a job while y'all was in the locker room if that's his job? He need that job to pay his bills or but get what he needs. So why would he risk his job to say something to uh, another man when it's a thousand and one another man outside his job? I'm just saying, you, that's the thing you got to think about. If you wouldn't say nothing to your, if you want to say nothing to your co-worker at your workplace, why do you think he going to say something to you? Nice job. Tall, bring us home, and then um, we'll, we'll do some Q&A tomorrow as a warm-up, and then uh, we'll finish it up. So, Tall, go ahead, 30 seconds. Listen, 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 my girl. Everything don't need to be explained, not everything but just know, just know, just know, just know, that my man's always on do what he got to do to play a sport. So, I mean, if that was a girl that came out, it wouldn't have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. She's a female. Yeah. Since it's a dude that came out, now it's a big subject. Yeah. Well, females and males is both the same. So why 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 do it? Why why do why do a male gotta get judged more than that female do? Go ahead, Johnson. Listen, my comment. brothers, you just am signing by saying that God going to accept what he do and do what he do. But God don't accept homosexuality. Oh, you know that. Because it's in the Bible, my brother. Chapter 102. <laughs> Read it. He intended to say that. Nice job. If you're homosexual, you go to hell. And you were saying by saying Wait, wait a minute. To that. Homosexuality just supposed to accept homosexuality. That's not right, my brother. That don't go. How am I supposed to accept that when this man comes to the right, Hey, fellas, go for it. We'll resume this tomorrow. We got to change class. Yeah, my brother. Great job.